Hi, we are going to use a FICO this time to design a, an, an antenna called Yagi, Yagi Uda. And the antenna I took from this book, the design from the uh, ARRL. And uh, it's, you can find it on the page 126 of this book. As you can see here, it talks about Yagi antennas. And finally, uh, they give some description here, some, uh, some data for designing uh, an Yagi antenna for it, uh, whatever frequency you desire, because it's, uh, everything is written in terms of, of wavelength. So then let's see how we do this uh, design on FICO. We create a new model. And let's see, let's see if we make an antenna for the frequency of uh, 400 megahertz. So we start minimum frequency 300 megahertz, F max uh, 500 megahertz. And our frequency, let's call it, call it F, it's 400 megahertz. We compute the wavelength as C0 divided by um, F. You can evaluate here, 80 centimeters. Because as you can see here, everything is read in terms of a, wave, a wavelength of lambda. Um, go back here. And now we are going to design to, to give the, this data here. We are calling wire one, two, three, up to seven. And we need to, to give these two columns here, the spacing and the length. So our reflector is going to be aligned to the X or Y axis, it doesn't matter. And uh, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to leave all this data in the description area of the uh, YouTube video. So then we start with here. Here it's done. Now we start with wire one uh, length is 0 0.503 0 0.503 times uh, wavelength add now wire 2 length this time is 474 474 Wire three length is um, four five eight five eight at four is zoom four five zero at five is Four three eight three eight at six is um, four three two four three two at and finally the last one is seven L. This time is four three one. You see, there is a very slight difference in the length of these last elements. Now, instead of using L, we are going to use P. The, the position of the last one is nine, it's nine one. Nine, six, one. Add, going backwards, the six is seven, one, seven. Seven one seven. The number five is five oh eight. 
number five is 508, 508. Number four is three, three, eight. Eight. Number three is two, one, six. Two, one, six. At number two is fifteen. And finally, number one is it is not needed, but it's zero. It's not needed. It's zero. So I guess we can also say that wire radius. Let's see, because the frequency is kind of low frequency, let's say it's three millimeters. Okay, now we need one, two, one LMP, two LMP, three LMP, four LMP, five, six, seven, seems to be all right. Now we have all the definitions here. We can start designing our antenna. We go to construct, line, and then we start, for instance, let's say we are going to align this on the along the Y. So V is zero here is M zero here, zero, zero, and uh, N is minus W1 L over two, copy and paste. This is the reflector, control C, control V. This is the reflector. It's there. Uh, number two is 2L and 2L, but here we are going to use the V as W2P, Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Now here we just write 3, 3, 3. Four, 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 five, 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 five. Six, 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 and six, and the last one, the last director, seven, seven, here, and here, and close. Well, if I haven't made any mistakes, any mistake, that's the Yagi antenna. The first one is the big one, is the reflector. This line two is the dipole, which is the element, excited element. And all the other ones from three to seven, um, those are the directors. So line two, let's, uh, you can see here that FICO automatically treats all these uh, lines as a wire. So we just need to now right click on wire one and say that it has a wire radius of three millimeters, control C. We just make it for each one of them properties. Apply here. You see, this is a kind of a boring uh, repetition, repetitive task. We can make it automatically using scripts or something like that. Okay. 
right click for all of them and finally the last one okay there you go and now you can attach our um, port source load we select line 2 which is the excited dipole wire port at the middle add oops you need to be here wire port middle create voltage source port 1 create and we can do the requests um, frequency we are uh, sweeping from F min to F max, let's say 21 megahertz, 21 points, discrete points. Uh, we can ask for, let's see, currents, for instance. We can ask for the far fields in 3D. We can ask for, we can make a right click here and hide. And we can also see the near fields. Um, near fields, it has to be the, the plane, let's see, the plane is where x is 0 or u is 0. For instance, minus, all the dimensions here are in meters. Let's see how it looks if you use 2 meters here. Okay, it's too big. Maybe here we can start with minus 1 use minus one and one sounds good minus one over two and here we can say 21 points to sample the field here add close get I guess that's everything we need to do um, mesh we create a mesh standard um, here wire radius over I don't know four done you can see the mesh there and now we can jump to the solver solve run CEM validate see if there is some mistake everything seems cool and we can actually FICO solver save it here yeah, I one, save, and then it starts the simulation. Okay, okay, once the simulation is finished, we did a very short and, and, and quick simulation. So if everything is all right, we can just jump to post-FICO. And within post fico we can see what kind of there is a message here and a warning maybe we did something not properly uh, set so let's see how the s11 or the reflection impedance looks so we click on cartesian and we just drag and drop voltage source here as you can see there is this typical uh, response of a yagi um, we click on db and here we have the reflection coefficient across the frequency range you can see it's matched around 400 as you expected but it could be uh, better we could uh, move this thing uh, below minus 10 db for instance but just for this first first step it seems okay uh, we can see how the far field looks we jump to the 3d view um, we pick the far field here there we go this is the far field for the frequency of 300 megahertz let's see in the b it's pretty ugly so we don't see any directivity at all so it's just a simple dipole but as you move up in frequency we just we go to animate type frequency that's fine we just play you see how it works as you move in frequency and you can see here let go let make it slow as we approach as we approach the 400 megahertz we have the typical yagi response 
So this just get in 400 megahertz. As you can see here, we have the reflector um, bouncing all the energy, or at least a, a, a large part of the energy in this direction and the directors acting as if they were some kind of lens um, concentrating the energy on this end fire direction, right? So you can see here, this is not a very broadband uh, antenna, but uh, it has in 400 megahertz a, kind, a gain of uh, 15. So it's a seven element. We can see here the realized gain, take into account the mismatch. It's 10 dB, 10 dB. And we can, we can also see how the, the new field looks. So we can just double click here. We have in the same plane, um, let's move it here, F5. We have in the same plane, the far field and the near field. We just pick, select the far field here, click on, on the eye. And now we just see the electric field here, near field, electric field. And we can uh, select, for instance, a uh, type of phase for 400 megahertz. You see, this is the, the electric field. You can see that the, this dipole is excited and it generates a wave that moves on the, uh, on the elements, as you can see here. So the distance between the elements makes this array, this, this wires operate as an array. So in, in such a way that the wave adds up in phase in only in this direction. And this, this last one here, the reflector, just reflects, as the name implies, reflects the energy in this direction here. But unfortunately, this is not a, a very a broadband antenna because and because it's uh, all these wires, as you can see here, they are cut in function of wavelength. So when you uh, change the wavelength, of course, the behavior is not the same. We can see the effect for uh, the lower frequency. We don't see the same thing going on. You see only the excited dipole works, but uh, we don't have we don't see the same kind of behavior, right? Um, FICO also, because it has the method of moments, you can also see, just turn it off, the currents, as you can see here, the currents, make it smaller here, and we can see in the B, and we can animate the phase, and let's pick 400 megahertz and you can see here okay just a little we just need to see the reflector okay fine you see this is the excited dipole it has the largest amplitude of current of course because this is the one which is excited but it, it uh, induces a very strong uh, amplitude, uh, current amplitude here on this director, which is the closest one, and a little bit on the reflector, right? That's the idea. So playing around with the length and also with the distance of those wires, you see those wires here, they are not active. So they are just pieces of wire floating in, 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 in the space. So that means uh, depending on the induced current, the distance and the length, uh, you can work out the field traveling in this direction in concentration only, mainly on the y-axis. That's why you have the directive uh, behavior of this. That's why you have the gain of this antenna in this direction here, right? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. See you next time.